Chair recognizes Mr. Obernolte for five minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to all of our witnesses for this hearing on what is an extremely important topic. Over the August break, I met with my health care advisory board, which includes representatives from all of the hospitals in my district. And the shortage of certain drugs was the number one issue for most of them. I heard about shortages of uh, sedatives, uh, of anesthetics, uh, chemotherapy drugs, which I know we have in common with a lot of hospitals, but also epinephrine, which surprised me. Uh, and they let me know in no uncertain terms just how important solving this problem is to them. Uh, Dr. Ganyo, I uh, read something really interesting in your testimony that I wanted to follow up on. Uh, one of the recommendations that you made is that the FDA finalize metrics for uh, quality management maturity and then require suppliers to report those metrics. And uh, in doing so, that would create information that's publicly available that would allow purchasers to prioritize purchases from manufacturers that were less likely to uh, experience shortages in drugs in the future. Uh, and that piqued my curiosity because, uh, you know, as, as a someone who is a fan of limited government and, you know, of, of of requirements from government only being a last case solution when the free the mechanisms of the free market can be employed. Uh, you know, I think that that would be great, this idea that just some more transparency and freer exchange of information could solve the problem. But I mean, I, I, end up, I, I also have to admit being a little skeptical because that ignores the complications of drugs where there's only a sole source. Uh, that ignores uh, situations where unpredictable demand has, occur has caused a shortage rather than any uh, error in forecasting on the side of the manufacturer. So could you talk a little bit more about that and uh, give us some hope that maybe that could be a possible solution to this problem? Sure, and uh, I'll refer back to the FDA root causes re uh, report that established a lack of market incentive for quality manufacturing as a root cause of shortages. Uh, and um, Mr. Goff had, had just previously cited cisplatin, had 50% of the market. But when you read the inspection report from that plant inspection, if, if that doesn't terrify you, then I don't know what would. So if the purchasers who built up 50% of the market share for that, for that company knew what they were investing their money in, would they have then continued to buy from that company or would they perhaps have bought from another company? So that's where we feel like the transparency into quality, the QMM program is, is a, a pilot that the FDA has been working on. It, it looks at a culture of quality, not just a particular manufacturer's uh, specific supply line. Um, and we think that gives purchasers that additional information to know, okay, this is the cheapest product, but maybe it's not the best investment for me to, to, to buy at this time. So just playing devil's advocate, isn't there already a market mechanism for that? Because if you're a manufacturer, who is willing to have invested in a more robust supply chain that's less susceptible to disruption, couldn't you evangelize that fact to potential buyers and use that to justify a higher price for your product and use that as a competitive advantage without the intervention of the FDA? Well, that's where we hope that the, the market forces continue to encourage competition. And if everyone is, is rising up to the standards that we would expect to see in a QMM program, then hopefully we're leveling the playing field and, and price competition comes back to where it should be. But without that transparency and equality, it's not a level playing field and purchasers are just simply buying the, the cheapest product available. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I would think that if there was a competitive advantage to be had there, uh, there's an incentive for a manufacturer to go seize it. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll continue to explore because, as I said, the uh, the, the, uh, this idea that greater transparency would, would solve part of this problem, I think, is a very attractive one. But whatever, whatever we do, we absolutely must fix this problem because it's affecting the health care of the constituents of everyone on this dais. And uh, we've heard that message loud and clear from the health care providers in our district. So I want to thank you very much for being here and uh, for your service in trying to accomplish that really important goal. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you. The gentleman yields back. Uh, seeing all members.